ask you, sir, what do you think about the new graffiti-proof cars? Well, as long as it doesn't affect my taxes, I think it's a fine idea. Jack, did you get that on camera? Mark Echo's Getting Up, Contents Under Pressure is a third-person video game which was released in February 14, 2006 for the PC, the Xbox, and the PlayStation 2. The game was published by Atari and developed by The Collective Inc., but after merging with Shiny Entertainment in 2007, they are now known as Double Helix Games. Getting Up is mixed into four gameplay elements, which is fighting, Climbing, you better watch out. a little bit of stealth, oh. Oh. and most importantly, writing. Back in the days, this was one of my most favorite games, a game revolving around graffiti. And since graffiti is one of the elements of the hip-hop culture, and I'm a b-boy myself, I thought that I'd play this game again with a different perspective and collect my thoughts. So, will getting up turn you into a graffiti legend, or will you remain a toy? Let's find out. Getting Up takes place in a corrupt fictional city of New Radius, where art is defined as crime, and graffiti artists gotta keep on their toes to avoid being captured or killed by the city's so-called main law enforcement, the Civil Conduct Keepers, or shortened CCK. 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 You play as a rising graffiti writer named Coltrane Crowley, aka Train. After leaving his grandmother's home and not listening to warnings about the dangers the city offers the graph artists, he sets out to get his name up, but little does he know that he will become more famous and infamous than anyone could have ever guessed. Still free, Mr. Mayor. What? The story is what the developers have definitely nailed. The game has great character development, starting Train as a mere toy graffiti writer who's only in the game for the fame. You ain't serious. I am serious. He gets a start from beefing with one of the biggest graffiti crews in the city, Vandals of New Radius. Yeah! B-A-N-R, what? After being crossed out by them and stepping on someone's kicks, this nigga stepped on my kicks. He gets back on his feet and plans to flip the whole script on them. I'ma flip the whole script on them. It all starts off simple, but the story will take a turn and Train ends up fighting the government through graffiti. He's the one doing all that 906 anti-sunk shit. And without spoiling anything, I will say that the ending has one of the best middle finger moments to the bad guys, to the face, I have seen. Use a lying bitch! So let's take a look at our four gameplay styles. Spill it or kiss the rail! Throughout the game, Train will go up against many enemies, like the Van R, CCK, and more. And of course, there are boss battles as well. Not again, damn it! Sadly, fighting isn't the sharpest pen in the box. You constantly get knocked over. I'm set up for you. And Train takes his time getting back to the fight, but I guess if I would get wrenched in the head like that, I'd take my time too. Another problem was facing too many guards at the same time. When you're facing three CCK guards, you better run and hide, otherwise you'll be fighting for a while getting dropped on your ass or even killed, and you could end up having to restart from the beginning of the chapter. And <laughs> let's not forget about the cheap deaths. Come on, man! Not that tough! This wackness. In the combat system, you got your usual kick and punch attacks. You can do power moves which will deplete the blue bar in the top left corner. You can grab your enemies, toss them around, or smack them down. When you jump to a wall, press one of the attack buttons and you will do a wall punch. And there are many other moves to use in combat. Also, when you're in trouble, usually a weapon is nearby which you can pick up and deal even more serious damage. One of the most original aspects the combat system has to offer is using your spray can as a flamer, which is always satisfying to pull off. I can smell the aerosol already! Take a walk with me, we go with all the opposite of running around and knocking some heads together is being stealthy. Hold down the sneak button and Train will squat down and enter stealth mode. This will make you less detectable and give you the possibility of performing silent takedowns. Uh, 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 oh! You see me now? 
My main problem with the takedown is that you have to press punch and kick button at the same time while in sneak mode, but many times I ended up grabbing my enemy because grabbing uses the same button combination. That's retarded. <laughs> yeah? Problems also occurred with grab kills. If you're positioned just an inch wrong, you will end up grabbing air and get detected. And? But pull one sucker down and send the other one flying after him and crack some skulls with spray cans and you will get a smirk on your face. You know, show off your skills. If you wanna get high up, get high. then you gotta climb. Luckily, getting up provides that. You can shimmy or walk on ledges, climb ladders, pipes, grids, or those green things, whatever those are. Oh shit. It's getting complicated now. The most acrobatic move you can do are these wall jumps, and you can balance yourself on beams as well. Mostly I had problems with the controls when I was trying to change my direction while beam walking and going over a corner in some places while shimmying. And why the hell does he have to climb a ladder like that? Damn you a stupid mother. But when you climb to a spot like this to bomb the wall, all is forgotten. Heaven spots. Getting up means getting your name up, not climbing tall buildings. And what better way to get your name up if not with the art of graffiti? No idea. Graffiti is definitely the most polished gameplay style this game brings you. Use intuition mode and you will see where you can throw down your main objectives, hit secondary spots and complete freeform challenges. All I could seem to focus on was spot after spot after spot. Like every true graffiti writer, Train has a black book where all of his sketches are stored. This is your bible. Now before each mission, you have the option to pick three pieces you want to throw on the walls, because the top one is always locked. This is my first problem with graffiti in this game. I was hoping that later in the game you could pick more or you could get some kind of an upgrade that could make this possible, because to me, four just isn't enough and you end up repeating the same pieces. Yeah, I'll see about that. The second problem is that you can't paint bigger pieces freely. My bad. Nope. Not here. The third problem is not being able to create your own tags. But still, there are many many pieces to choose from and some of them come with a great sense of humor. So, in the black book, you can check out your pieces or freeform. Freeform is tagging and doing easier in smaller things like stickers, marker tags, aerosol tags, stencils and posters. And there's a wide variety to choose from. When you check out your pieces, you got murals, roll-ups, throwdowns, wet paste and my favorite, wild style. You can also change color in some of them. How do you do all the shading? And all those colors? Painting will take a bit of time getting used to, but you'll be painting like a legend in no time, especially when you unlock the fast spray ability later in the game. Finish your piece within the given time limit, go big where you can and don't spray in the same spot for too long otherwise it's gonna be full of drips. Do all that and you will get your maximum reputation points. What are you saying? I got so addicted to painting that I had to hit every spot I could possibly find. Nobody's telling your side of the story. It's a shame that graffiti's full potential is held back by these minor inconveniences. But still, graffiti looks fantastic in this game and it's a huge part of the story. You think he's just doing all this to get paint off the walls? What makes a game more challenging is the enemy AI. In this game, for the most part, the enemy AI is pretty stupid. Stuff like guards not noticing new paintings on the walls, when they catch on fire they just run around until they die, when you get discovered and chased you just climb to a higher spot and suddenly they forget about you. And sometimes it's stuff like this. I guess the smartest thing they can do is kicking your ass pretty good and calling for reinforcements if you're not quick enough taking a guard down. You see this shit? So let's see how the game presents itself. Getting up brings you quality voice acting, interesting characters with an interesting storyline, an excellent soundtrack, well done cutscenes especially the movie ones, and well designed environments that send you tagging in places like the underground subway tunnels, freeways and of course the streets. Train. Uh, isn't that supposed to be spelled T-R-A-I-N? Train is exactly how I imagined him even before playing the game. He's brave, he's confident and not afraid to get into a fight. Come on! What, you too pretty? And he never gives up despite how many warnings he gets throughout the game. This game ain't for you. He's voiced by the rapper Talib Kweli, who does an excellent job in portraying the character. Other actors lend their voice as well, like Michael Barron, aka MC Search, as Gabe, who leads the Van R gang. Giovanni Ribisi as Cry One, a toy rider full of enthusiasm who just wants to get up and push his train to start a crew of their own. You might also recognize him from the Avatar game and the movie as Parker Selfridge, and from 2003, 
Henry, Call of Duty as Private Elder. I'm, I'm down for whatevs! There's George Hamilton, who voices the corrupt mayor Sung, who's definitely got some skeletons in his closet. Sung's got skeletons in his closet. Charles Murphy as White Mike, a big guy you don't want to mess with unless you want to get squished. He was also Jizzy B in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. You want to try calling me fat ass to my face? Rosario Dawson as Tina, who is Gabe's girl at the start but ends up being Train's love interest. She was also Lily Droll in the 2012 release Syndicate. <laughs> Foolish. Sean Squire is the notorious graffiti writer Decoy, who's got a mysterious past and always something interesting to say. You see what's happening in this city? And of course, the famous Adam West as Chief Hunt, who is determined to clean up the city of its so-called rats. Rat! You damn rat! Even though he doesn't really fit to play a part like this, that voice is still awesome. Shoot the son of a bitch! Then there are the real-life graffiti legends who train meets on his path to fame, and who give train tips and teach him new skills to paint with, like Cope 2, Smith, Scene, T-Kid, Futura, and Obey, who are voiced by themselves. You can also check out additional information about them in the Black Book. To be written in history, you have to know your history. The characters in this game are great. Too bad there's so little connection with them. Train and Tina's love interest is never really explored. Not much connection with Train's crew. You won't get to know much about any of them and what will happen to them. You just know what they do and who they are. But what kind of life have they lived? That's a mystery to all of us. Man, I don't know. Oh no, I think you do. What helps in advancing the story and developing characters in a game are the cutscenes. The cutscenes that use gameplay graphics are done well for the most part. There were a couple of scenes that gave me a good laugh though, and let's analyze one of those. You're dead, man, dead! Here you can see Train and Gabe bombing a freeway sign, and without any explanation, Gabe starts walking back, and from this point, it's pretty obvious what will happen. Train, shit, I'm falling! Train, I'm fallen. Well, must have been a really slow fall if you had time to say all that. Now look at his position. He's facing his back to the road. There's no way he can get out of this. But Train still managed to catch him somehow, and now he's like this. I ain't trying to see a wheelchair! Don't worry, you won't be seeing a wheelchair from a fall like this. Probably a coffin. How could he be so careless? And I did dig up some information on Gabe, and it said that he's afraid of heights. But if he's afraid of heights, then why the hell was he climbing with Train all around the freeway in the first place? It makes no sense. And after Train pulls Gabe up, the scene just ends. So, um... What the fuck? But let's check out the movie scenes. These are one of the best I've ever seen in a video game. The effects, transitions, music and design are done so well, they create the perfect atmosphere for each scene. Especially the ones where Train is in Decoy's crib. You lying. Nobody knows where he lives. The in-game cutscenes are good, but the movie ones are fantastic and are definitely worth checking out. Maybe I will. But what good is a game without a soundtrack? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. The soundtrack for Getting Up is perfect. It was put together by RJD2 and he nailed it. Featuring artists like Eric B and Rackham, Biggie, Mob Deep, Polyrhythmatics, Fort Minor, and more. It's not just a music selection, it's how it has been combined with the game during fighting, escaping, graffiti parts, and in cutscenes. In the main menu, you can check out your iPod to listen to the tracks, and you can collect iPods to unlock even more songs which are scattered in different levels. <laughs> A couple of times I had a difficult decision. Should I keep playing the game or start breaking because the music is just that good? I haven't heard a soundtrack that fits the scene and sounds this good in a long long time. Are you crazy? Getting Up is a very unique game. It's amazing that for a game that's about graffiti, they managed to build such great personas and a top-notch story that has its twists, conspiracies and awesome moments despite some of the gameplay flaws. It's like that? An excellent soundtrack and good looking visual style. If you're into graffiti, then you will be sucked into this game. And if you're not, you will still get something out of it. For a 2006 year game, it still holds a lot of appeal to me. And this game needs a sequel. Getting up will definitely turn you into a graffiti legend. This game gets 7.5 spray cans out of 10.